Guys, it's Andy here. Alright, uh, check out my other video that I just posted about um, the high drain BMS uh, using talking about this circuit and looking into possibly building it. So check out that video, but uh, this video is going to be uh, an update of everything I'm working on right now and uh, just a general um, general video. Okay, so if you're not if you're interested in this stuff and or more specifically if you are doing uh, lithium battery projects if you're tinkering and DIYing on your own um, then uh, you should definitely be in these Facebook group groups uh, J. Hud Garcia's DIY power walls and DIY power wall which is done by Peter Matthews um, he's from Australia and Jay who's in California so definitely, um, definitely join those two groups if you're tinkering. Another thing is, so I'm switching my, uh, I'm switching the way I do my videos because I feel like I've, um, I've been doing a very poor job with the videos. I don't like how scattered they are. I need to them to have more balance and focus. The ones that the videos that I've done that have more direction obviously get far more views like a thousand views a thousand then the rest only get like dozens or hundreds so uh, I, I feel like um, it's not very smart or um, good to be making videos that um, are just shotgun spread They're, they don't have much direction right so um, like I'm a small youtuber I don't make money off doing this I do this just um, almost as like a portfolio to show what I've done and I like sharing um, my knowledge and um, my journey with you guys so I don't make money off this I'm not um, I don't I don't feel like I want to deal with that stuff uh, right now it's um because uh, I'm still I'm just doing this for fun it's a hobby but anyway so I'm gonna be trying to focus on more uh, directed so let's move forward a uh, new subscriber since my last video which wasn't that long ago is Yan Yan so thank you for subscribing and then we'll go on to comments so James he's uh, switched to a 900 watt microwave instead of previously having a 1500 watt microwave because because of his inverter he's off-grid obviously so yeah, I was just asking him um, in previous videos in the comment section about this because he's talking about um, lowering the wattage of all the equipment in, like um, household appliances in his house. So um, I looked at mine. I have a 900 watt microwave and my um, my hot water boiler. It's it's pretty small. It's not a big one and it consumes like a kilowatt, which I, I mean shouldn't be surprising, but it is surprising how much power these appliances consume but anyways this one was really important uh, look up YouTube videos there's temperature control relays you can buy so this is what James did he took a chest freezer and converted it into a fridge using a custom temperature control relay so you like swap out all the electronics in a chest freezer for new ones and you can control the temperature to be uh, almost anything you want within the reason of freezer temperature and fridge temperature so really smart thing there's another mod you can do where you take out the uh, compressor and you put in a DC compressor which uh, is pretty tricky um, it involves like a tank of coolant it's like R21 or something it's not Freon but it's like you know what's in air conditioners so you need a tank of that, and you need like all the valves and hoses. Uh, it gets pretty tricky, but uh, I've seen it done before. Um, it's illegal because it's an ozone depleter. I think it's it's very unhealthy, so it's I wouldn't recommend it. But you can do it. So you buy this DC um, compressor for fridges and freezers, and then you have to solder it in with a blowtorch and solder and. Uh, flux so it's it's a little tricky but you can also do that mod on top of this mod and you save yourself a ton of money because it's really expensive for a DC fridge or freezer especially a chest fridge or freezer so yeah pretty cool I uh, was also mentioning about buying solar panels uh, it costs $250 in shipping 
if you only buy one to ten of them, and then three hundred dollars total in shipping if you buy twenty to thirty of them. So in my previous video, uh, I was talking about that. My previous update video, and he has a second uh, inverter, an APC fifteen hundred, as a backup inverter. Because like I was saying before, uh, inverters are the highest point of failure in off-grid living. Like inverters always break because they're full of relays and transistors that are constantly turning on and off and it's just wear and tear. They they break. It is what it is. So Andy Ham is talking about uh so he donated to me an APC fourteen hundred VA and uh he was just mentioning in the comments of uh one of my my second last video technically now uh, you can have a USB to serial, but it can only do basic functionality. You you would need a serial to do like the voltage drop or the voltage um, uh, in order to change the settings for maximum voltage, all that stuff. But I figured out a way around that. He was also mentioning uh, the fins of the H bridge are positive voltage. Uh, he's talking about these guys here, right? These four big copper pipes. You know, I was mentioning in my second last video how dangerous that is, and uh, it's even more dangerous than I thought because if your body is grounded, like if you're standing in a puddle of water and you touched it, you could severely hurt yourself. I know people over exaggerate and say, oh, you could die. Most likely you would just severely hurt yourself. Like, um, difference between AC and DC voltage. This is AC voltage. This is DC voltage, right? DC kills because it locks your muscles and it just won't stop squeezing, right? And then you're dead because you can't let go. So he's mentioning very careful, be very, very careful around this stuff. Like AC voltage, you're like, what the hell? Like I've been electrocuted once by a telephone line. I was working on it. And all of a sudden my hand starts going like this, and I was like, what the hell? And I can feel this weird feeling creeping up my arm, and, I, and my arm starts doing this even more and more. And I was like, holy shit, and I let go, and I was like, okay, that's a weird way of getting electrocuted. Because it didn't hurt, it just like, it was just affecting my body, because uh, phone line voltages are, are different. They're AC, but they're different. Correct me if I'm wrong. So anyways, um... This is my serial cable, except I don't have any computers with a serial port, which is super frustrating. So, I found one, so I looked it up, I looked it up, and I figured it out. And, where is it? Nope. Oh. Okay, so I found it. So I had two options, and it was pretty much the same device with a different sticker on it. So when you're buying a USB to serial adapter, it has to be a male plug. Right, that's to be male plug. It's a little confusing at first when you're trying to figure out which is male and which is female with these serial ports. But um, the one with the pins is the male, and the one that you know the pins shove into is female. It doesn't matter anyway. So I got this. It's going to take 20 days to come in. So I've got a f I've tricked this. So this thing has a circuit board inside of here that converts the serial signal to a USB signal. Um, so it's cheap, seven dollars. Um, if I got it off Amazon, it would be a minimal of thirty dollars, all said and done. So I think I'm gonna go to like Canada Computers and just like buy one of these for like thirty to forty dollars, and then with the proper shit, and then I'll carefully open it, and then I'll um, I'll quickly do the work I need to to change the setting, and then I'll just bring it back and return it. I know that's really like, I don't like doing that, it's really dirty, but when these things are going for like 7 bucks off the internet and you only have to wait 20 days and these fuckers are selling them for like 35 40 50 dollars, like, sorry man, I think I'm the one that's getting screwed over. That's a huge markup. So anyways, I figured that out, I'm gonna try that out and see, and if it doesn't work then I have an actual legit reason to return the item, so. No big deal. This came in. Um, where is it? Actually, should I? Okay, so let's do simpler things. Alright, so I bought this guy. He has this type of connector. So I bought him for like $27. And then I bought this um, 
There's two of them in this package? Hmm. No, I think there's only one. But anyways, it was cheap. Um, I don't know how much I totally paid for. It doesn't matter. Not very much. Alright. So, anyways, I bought the uh, connector plug. It uses these pins, so it should be fine. So I bought that and bought that. And this is a 5 amp charger, so this will be good for... Um, I'm going to say emergencies. I'm not going to modify or take it apart. Like, I broke the last two I had because I was screwing around. I've wasted like over $100 just because of messing with these guys. They get hot, you just have to accept it. So there's that. I bought four of these, so this is like 20 bucks for four 9-watt uh, LED light bulbs. And... Does it even say? Yeah, so these are the specs. So they're 24 volt light bulb, 12 to 24 volts, so they should be coming in soon. 900 lumens, pretty low. I'm going to just test them out. Um, I think it'll be fun. But I don't need that anymore because I've figured out these guys here, these giant buck converters that perfectly convert anywhere between 18 to 35 volts down to a perfect 12 volts. So, and there's different sizes. This is a large one, obviously. You can check out my previous videos where I talk about this unit, but you can buy um, other ones. So there's that. But anyways, I just wanted to do this because my dad wants his uh, hunt camp to be um, run off of uh, that solar pack right here. So he would really like it for the hunt camp. So I'm going to be testing and designing it and setting it up so it can be solar and run the hunt camp. Because you don't need much, you just need enough uh, power to, um, this will be like possibly a year from now that he needs it. Because the hunt camp is in such bad um, situation, it's way up north and it's in such bad shape that they have to, we're going to be building a whole new hunt camp. Maybe I'll, if you want to see a video of that, of us building it, because my dad, he's a, he has his own sawmill and it, he's a woodworker. So, like, we're going to be building a hunt camp modularly. That's the way he's thinking. So he's going to build it at his house. And then we're going to bring it on his trailer to the site. And then set it up so all the walls are modular and then connected within reason. He's probably going to use wood screws. He always uses wood screws, um, mostly. But anyway, so it'll be a year from now. So I'll be using that thing for quite a while. Maybe I'll build a whole separate one for him. That's a bit bigger. I don't know. But he wants it a bit more portable. So that's done talking about that guy. Alright, so I bought this guy. I mentioned him in my previous video about the uh, high drain BMS. So this, see it's a bit different. The uh, right here, this sticks up instead of out. So this whole unit is different than uh, the other ones. Even though it looks identical, it's not. So I bought this Why They actually, because of that stupid Canada Postal Service strike... They cancelled it once and I got pissed off so it's not a big deal. But it was like twenty bucks, seven bucks shipping, they hide that in there. Plus the twelve bucks. I always round up. Don't round down. Idiots round down. That's why they put the price like nine ninety nine. It's for idiots that round down. So don't be a fool. Anyways, all these where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Nope. See, this one, it's different. You notice that? Different cable, red cable, plus this sticks outward instead of straight up. Weird, eh? See, and then there's this one. This one does the same, but it's different. A different picture. <laughs> That's a totally different picture. So anyway, supposedly I bought this one, and where is it? Can you find it for me? Nope. All right. 80 milliamps. So this is the highest I've been able to find, so that's why I bought it. It's because it claims that it can drain 80 milliamps instead of 50 or 30. So that's this guy. 20 amp. So I'm going to try him out. And that should be coming eventually. It's going to take forever because December is terrible for shipping. Just straight up. Alright, this came in, this wire. Um, yeah, that's all that. So we're down to this guy. This is what I bought. 100 feet of 30 AWG. It's a uh, copper wire that's been tinned, supposedly. Alright, so let's go look at it. We did talk about this, right? Nope, I don't think I mentioned... I didn't finish um, 
mentioning okay so other things that Andy Ham talked about so thanks again Andy Ham for uh, for giving me that 1400 VA uh, UPS really appreciate it man like I know I've said this before I've thanked you before but like this thing is such a piece of junk I I the more I think about it the more annoyed I am at how horrible this thing is so I'm very excited um anyways so another thing he mentioned we talked about that right the fins yeah DC we already talked about that so the next thing is um, in my second last video I talked about wind and he mentioned that you can use hoverboard motors and treadmill motors which is awesome you can look up YouTube videos guys of people that have uh, you can get treadmills for free I looked it up in my city in my area I could find five different treadmills with perfect motors in them that I could use for um, making wind turbines. So I was going to do that, but I'm, I'm going to focus more on the battery stuff. That's my expertise, but hoverboard motors too. People probably just give these things away. Those hoverboards, they just catch fire and kill people. So, um, well, nobody died, but anyway, so sorry about not finishing that. So that's finished. Let's move on to the last part of this puzzle. I need to uh, get more lights put in this garage. Okay, so this is this is it, guys. Oh yeah, so this is the fuse wire, right? Came in like this, hundred feet. All right, so this is basically what I'm gonna do. I figured out how I'm going to fuse it. So I'm just putting this um, 214 wire housing wire down, just to explain what I'm doing, because uh, this stuff is really hard to see. So on the positive and negative of the total circuit, we'll have this braided, you see it's um, braided to 214 copper wires on the positive and negative. Okay, so, and then on, so this one, this one, so let's see now. Can we zoom out far enough? So one, two, three, four, five, so six of the lengths, you stagger it, this much and then you see they're staggered perfectly evenly and then you just solder the wire right you just bend these clips over a bit and solder it and then it makes fusing and this is the problem was the speed the only downside is is if you blow the fuses you have to take the entire unit apart so this would be can't even barely see all right, so you see I'll just solder and then you bend it. All right, I could probably go like that, yeah. So it'll look like a zigzag, okay? Yeah. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like, all right? It's gonna be zigzagging through. Uh, we're gonna first do some testing. I'm gonna solder it, but you do this first and then you flux it and then solder. I need to buy some uh, solder with flux core. Uh, it's a little, it'd be a lot faster because uh, this stuff does not, I should have, it says it does, rosin core. Hmm. This is probably because I'm using this stuff. Yeah, plumbing, plumbing solder doesn't have rosin core. But I think I can use this stuff. I'm going to run out really quick. That's the only downside. But I don't need much solder because of how tiny and small this wire is. But we're going to do some testing first and see how much amperage this 30 gauge tinned copper can, can handle. And then the very edges need that. So yeah, I'll, I'll feel very safe with this design. And plus I can very quickly do it, especially if I get rosin core uh, solder it can be even faster and yeah do the whole thing up and then it's just slightly staggered so I lose only a small amount of space like half a centimeter of uh, usable space I guess one centimeter right no just half a centimeter of space is lost to this way of doing it so we'll see how it looks but you can tell I have a lot of uh, different things on the go We'll see what we can do. I feel like I might be biting off more than I can chew. I have these nice fuses. I wish this would autofocus. Is it doing it now? Yeah? Alright, now it's autofocusing. 
But yeah, a lot of different things, a lot of different uh, things I can work on. Uh, anyone who lives in Hamilton, Ontario area, if you ever want to uh, hang out and maybe do a bit of this stuff with me, um, maybe if you want to learn about it, uh, hit me up. Because uh, I seem to be flooding myself with too much work. Because I have to put all these on, right? So I have to put one of these on each one of these. I have to move this whole this whole unit, take this off. I have to work on this. And yeah, so I feel like I've bitten off more than I can chew at the moment. But yeah, so I have to put one of these on and then put uh, one of these on as well. So, And plus I want to put a switch on these so they're not always on. So each one... Maybe actually I can do one switch will turn them all on and all off since I just have to I have a sensor and a positive and a negative. So we're gonna see how that goes. I may have to wire diagram this thing. But yeah, it's already a 20 minute video. Sorry about that. Seems uh, pretty normal for us though. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Uh, let me know what you think. I know we I talked about quite a few things in this video, but uh, it's an update. Busy, busy, guys, as always. Anyways, thanks, guys. Have a good day. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoy this stuff, you find it interesting, please do. It really means a lot to me. Um, you know, gives me those dopamine hits. <laughs> All right, have a good day, guys. Bye.